Namaskar my dear friend in this video I am going to give in detail how to do self enquiry this explanation and description is based on the teachings of Sadhu Om's book on self-enquiry. Sri Sadhu Om's book on self-enquiry is usually regarded as the definitive instruction manual for that practice. He was Sri Ramana Maharishi's direct disciple and Murganar's literary executor. This article contains the entire chapter on taking from his book. In our opinion, these are the most thorough and authoritative instructions in existence for Sri Ramna's method. This is photograph of Sri Sadhu. Om. At the young age of 16, when he was not even aware of the fact, this is the sadhana of self-enquiry that directly bestows the experience of Brahma. It so happened one day that without any prior intention, Bhagwan Sri Ramana embarked upon this rare sadhana. On that day, as if he were about to die, a great fear of death possessed him all of a sudden. Because of it, an impulse to scrutinize death also arose in him spontaneously. He was not perturbed to see the fast approaching death, nor did he feel inclined to inform others about it. He decided to welcome it calmly and solve the problem all along. He lay down stretching his limbs like a corpse and began to scrutinize death practically face to face since it is of prime importance for the readers to know the technique of self-inquiry performed by Sri Bhagwan, the Sadguru let us see it here in the very words in which he later narrated his experience. All right, death has come. What is death? What is it that is dying? It is this body that is dying. Let it die. Deciding thus, closing the lips tightly and remaining without breath or speech like a corpse, what came to my knowledge as I looked within was, this body is dead. Now it will be taken to the cremation ground and burnt. It will become ashes. All right, but with the destruction of this body, am I also destroyed? Am I really this body? 
although this body is lying as a speechless and breathless corpse undoubtedly i am existing untouched by this death my experience is shining clearly and unobstructed so this perishable body is not i i am verily the impo- immortal i self of all things i alone am the reality this body is subject to death but i who transcend the body am eternally living even the death came to the body was unable to touch me thus it dawned directly and along with it the fear of death that had come at first also vanished never to appear again all this was experienced in a split second as direct knowledge pratyaksham and not as mere reasoning thoughts from that time onwards the consciousness chit of my existence sat transcending the body has ever continued to remain the same thus sri ramna narrated although sri bhagwan later explained all this to us in so many words he emphasized that all important fact all this took place within a second as a direct experience without the action of mind and speech on account of this fear of death the concentration of sri bhagwan was fixed and deeply immersed in self attention in order to find out what is my existence what is it that dies thus it is proved by what sri bhagwan himself did that as we have been explaining all along only such a firm fixing of our attention of self is self enquiry atma vichara he has confirmed the same idea in the work who am i where he says always keeping the mind the attention fixed in self in the feeling i alone is called self enquiry remaining firmly in self abidance without giving even the least room to the rising of any thought other than the thought of self that is without giving even the least attention to any second or third person but only to self is surrendering one self to god which alone is called prab bhakti the supreme devotion when sri bhagwan was asked what is the means and technique to hold constantly on to the i consciousness he revealed in his works the technique of self enquiry which as explained above he had undertaken in his early age but in a more detailed manner as follows the enquiry who am i the path of knowledge or gyan marga 
एंड सेल्फ सरेंडर द पाथ ऑफ लव और भक्ति मार्ग आर द टू ग्रेट रॉयल पाथ फाउंड आउट बाय भगवान श्री रामना फ्रॉम हिज ओवन एक्सपीरियंस एंड टॉट बाय हिम फॉर द सल्वेशन ऑफ ह्यूमिनिटी In this book, the path of Sri Ramana, Part One, the path of pure non-dual knowledge, the inquiry, who am I, alone is dealt with while in Chapter Two of the Path of Sri Ramana, Part Two, a full exposition of the nature of this supreme devotion, para bhakti is given. Self, Atma is that which is. self signing in the form i am that i am one should not imagine to be anything such as this or that light or sound imagining or thinking thus itself boundaries since self is the consciousness which is neither light nor darkness let it not be imagined as a light of any kind that though itself would be a boundaries the annihilation of the ego the primal thought alone is liberation mukti all the three bodies consisting of the five seats are contained in the feeling i am the body therefore if by the enquiry who is this i that is by self attention the identification with attachment to the gross body alone is removed the identification with the other two bodies will automatically cease to exist as it is only by clinging to this that the identifications with the subtle and causal bodies live there is no need to annihilate these identifications separately how to enquire can the body which is insentient like a log and such things shine and function as i it cannot the body cannot say i this is from ulladu narpadu verse 23 therefore discarding the corpse like body as an actual corpse and remaining without even uttering the word i vocally discarding the body as a corpse not uttering the word i by mouth but seeking with the mind diving in words whence does this i rise alone is the path of knowledge gyan marga this is ulladu narpadu verse 29 if keenly observed what that feeling is which now shines as i is sapurna alone will be experienced without sound as i i in the heart sapurna an experience of a new clear and fresh knowledge of one's existence when the mind reaches the heart by enquiring within who am i he i the ego falling down abashed the one the reality appears spontaneously as i i i am that i am this is from ulladu narpadu verse 30 when sought within what is the place from which it rises as i i the ego will die this is 
सेल्फ एनक्वायरी दिस इज फ्रॉम उपदेशा उंडियार वर्ष 19 वेयर दिस आई डाइज देयर एंड देन शाइंस फोर्थ स्पॉन्टेनियसली द वन एज आई आई दैट अलोन इज द होल पूर्णम दिस इज फ्रॉम उपदेशा उंडियार वर्ष 20 इफ विदाउट लिविंग इट वी जस्ट बी द सफूर्ण कंप्लीटली एनिहिलेटिंग द फीलिंग ऑफ इंडिविजुअलिटी द ईगो आई एम द बॉडी फाइनली विल कम टू एन एंड जस्ट एज द कैंपर फ्लेम डाइज आउट this alone is proclaimed to be liberation by sages and scriptures although in the beginning on account of the tendencies towards sense objects we say vasanas which have been recurring down the ages thoughts rise in countless numbers like the waves of the ocean they will all perish as the aforesaid self attention becomes more and more intense since even the doubt is it possible to destroy all of them and to remain as self alone is only a thought without giving room even to that thought one should persistently cling fast to self attention however great a sinner one may be if not lamenting oh i am a sinner how can i attain salvation but completely giving up even the thought that one is a sinner one is stayed fast in self attention one will surely be saved therefore everyone diving deep within himself with desirelessness varage can attain the pearl of self as long as there are tendencies towards sense objects in the mind since they will always create some subtle or gross world appearance so long the enquiry who am i is necessary as and when thoughts rise of their own accord one should annihilate all of them through enquiry then and there in their very place of origin what is the means to annihilate them if other thoughts rise disturbing self attention one should without attempting to complete them enquire to whom did they rise it will then be known to me immediately if we observe who is this i that thinks the mind our power of attention which was hitherto engaged in thinking of second and third persons will turn back to its source self hence since no one is there to attend to them the other thoughts which had risen will also subside by repeatedly practicing thus the power of the mind to abide in its source increases when the mind thus abides in the heart the first thought i i am the body the rising i which is the root of all other thoughts itself having vanished 
the ever existing self the being i alone will shine the place or state where even the slightest trace of thought i i in this that the body brahma and so on does not exist alone is self that alone is called silence monam after coming to know that the final decision of all the scriptures shastras is that such destruction of the mind alone is liberation mukti to read scriptures unlimitedly is fruitless in order to destroy the mind it is necessary to inquire who one is then how instead of inquiring thus within oneself to inquire and know who one is in scriptures for rama to know himself to be rama is a mirror necessary that is to say for one to know oneself through self attention to be i am are scriptures necessary one self is within the five seats whereas the scriptures are outside them therefore how can one self who is to be attended to within setting aside even the five seats be found in scriptures since scriptures inquiry is futile one should give it up and take to self inquiry thus says bhagwan sri ramna refer to the first chapter of vichara sangraha and to the whole of who am i from which the above six paragraphs are paraphrased by means of an example let us make more clear this technique sadhana of fixing the attention only on self which has been described above in the words of sri bhagwan but from the very outset it must be conceded that since the nature of self is unique and beyond comparison it cannot be explained fully and accurately by any one through any example whatsoever though most of the examples which have been given in accordance with the intellectual development of the people and the different circumstances of their times may be appropriate to great extent these insensient jada examples can never fully explain self the sentient chit the example of a cinema projector often pointed out by sri bhagwan and the following example of a reflected ray of the sun from a mirror given solely with the view that they may remove many doubts of the readers and clear me their understanding but one should not fall into the error of stressing the example too far as did the blind man who concluded my child swallowed a crane when he was told milk is white the story of the blind man once a man 
blind from birth was informed that a son was born to him while he was still rejoicing over the happy event the very next day brought him the shocking news of his child's death with grief he asked how did my baby die by drinking milk how is milk milk is white how is white white is like the crane how is the crane losing his patience the messenger made the blind man feel his hand which he bent like a crane and said the crane is like this at once the blind man lamented exclaiming exclaiming oh no wonder my small child should die on taking such a big thing a broken piece of mirror is lying on the ground in the open space in full sunshine the sunlight that falls on that piece of mirror is reflected and the reflected light enters a nearby dark room and falls on its inner wall the ray from the mirror to the inside wall of the dark room is a reflected ray of the sun by means of this reflected ray a man in the dark room is able to see the objects inside that room the reflected light when seen on the wall is of the same form or shape as the piece of mirror triangular square or round but the direct sunlight the original light the source of the reflected ray in the open space shines indivisible single all pervading and unlimited by any specific form or shape self our existence consciousness is similar to the direct sunlight in the open space the ego feeling or mind knowledge the i am the body consciousness is similar to the reflected ray stretching from the mirror to the inner wall of the room since self consciousness is limitless like the vast all pervading direct sunlight it has no form adjunct rupa upadi since just as the reflected ray takes on the limitations and size of the piece of mirror the ego feeling experiences the size and form of a body as i it has adjuncts just as the objects in the dark room are cognized by means of the reflected light the body and world are cognized only by means of mind knowledge although the world and the mind rise and set together it is by mind alone that the world shines this is from ulladu narpadu verse 7 let us suppose that a man in the dark room wants to stop observing the objects in the room which are seen by means of the reflected light and is possessed instead by a longing to see its source when comes this light if so he should go to the very spot where the reflected beam strikes the wall position his eyes and look back along the beam what does he see then the sun 
but what he now says is not the real sun it is only a reflection of it furthermore it will appear to him as if the sun is lying at a certain spot on the ground outside the room the particular spot where the sun is seen lying outside can even be pointed out as being so many feet to the right or left of the room like saying two digits to the right from the center of the chest is the heart but does the sun really lie thus on the ground at that spot no that is only the place whence the reflected beam rises what should he do if he wants to see the real sun he must keep his eyes positioned along the straight line in which the reflected beam comes and without moving them to either side of it follow it towards the reflected sun which is then visible to him just as the man in the dark room deciding to see the source of the reflected beam which has come into the room gives up the desire either to enjoy or to make research about the things there with the help of that reflected beam so a man who wants to know the real light self must give up all efforts towards enjoying or knowing about the various worlds which shines only by means of the mind light functioning through the five senses since he cannot know self either if he is deluded by cognizing and desiring external objects like a worldly man or if he is engaged in investigating them like our modern scientist this giving up of attention towards external sense objects is desirelessness varage or inward renunciation the eagerness to see whence the reflected ray comes into the room corresponds to the eagerness to see whence the ego i the mind light rises this eagerness is love for self savatma bhakti keeping the eyes positioned along the straight line of the beam without straying away to one side or the other corresponds to the one pointed attention fixed unswervingly on the eye consciousness is not the man now moving along the straight line of the reflected beam from the dark room towards the piece of mirror lying outside this moving corresponds to the driving within towards the heart just as one would dive in order to find something that had fallen into the water so one should dive within with a keen introverted mind controlling breath and speech and know the rising place of the rising ego know thus ulladu narpadu verse 28 some taking only the words should dive within controlling breath and speech set out to practice exercises of breath control pranayama 
although it is a fact that the breath stops in the course of inquiry for it to be stopped the roundabout way of pranayama is not necessary when the mind with a tremendous longing to find the source which gives it light turns inwards the breath stops automatically if the breath of the inquirer is exhaled at the time of his mind thus giving up knowing external sense objects visayas and starting to attain to its original form of light self it automatically remains outside without being again drawn in likewise if it is inhaled at that time it automatically remains inside without being again exha- exhaled these are to be taken as external retention by a kumbhaka and internal retention antra kumbhaka respectively until there is a rising of a thought on account of non vigilance parmada in self attention this retention kumbhaka will continue in an inquirer quite effortlessly but a little scrutiny will it not be clear to anyone that even in our everyday life when some startling news is suddenly brought to us or when we try to recollect a forgotten thing with full concentration the breath stops automatically on account of the keenness of mind the intensity of concentration that takes place then similarly the breath will stop automatically as soon as the mind with an intense longing to see its original form of light and with earnest one pointedness begins to turn keenly and remain within in this state of retention kumbhaka no matter how long it continues the inquirer does not experience suffocation that is the urge to exhale or inhale but while practicing pranayama if the units of time matras of the retention are increased one does experience suffocation if the inquirer's attention is so intensely fixed on self that he does not even care to know whether the breath has stopped or not then his state of retention is involuntary and without struggle there are some aspirants however who try to know at that time whether or not the breath has stopped this is wrong for since the attention is thus focusing on the breath self attention will be lost and thereby various thoughts will shoot up and the flow of sadhana will be interrupted that is why sri bhagwan advised control of breath and speech with a keen introverted mind it would it would it would be wise to understand this verse thus by adding with a keen mind kurunda matyal in all the three places control the breath with a keen mind dive within with a keen mind and know the rising place with a keen mind therefore by the practice of fixing the mind the attention in the heart self 
the pure consciousness both the destruction of tendencies vasanas and the control of the breath are accomplished automatically this is from ullado narpado anubandham verse 24 by this very moving along it does not the man who positions his eyes on the reflected beam reduces its length just as the length of the beam decreases as he advances so also the mind's tendency of expanding shrinks more and more as the aspirant perseveres in sincerely seeking its source when the attention goes deeper and deeper within along the reflected ray i its length decreases more and more and when the ray i dies that which shines as i is gyana this is from atam vichara patikam verse 9 when the mind finally reaches the very near to the piece of mirror he can be said to have reached the very source of the reflected ray this is similar to the aspirant diving within and reaching the source heart whence he had risen does not the man now attain a state where the length of the reflected ray is reduced to nothing a state where no reflection is possible because he is so close to the mirror similarly when the aspirant on account of his diving deeper and deeper within by an intense effort of self attention is so close to his source that not even an iota of rising of the ego is possible he remains absorbed in the great dissolution of the i am the body feeling the atma buddhi which he had hitherto had as a target of attention this dissolution is what sri bhagwan refers to when he says i will die in upadesha undiyar verse 19 because of his mere search for the source of the reflected ray of the sun does not the man now after leaving the dark room stand in the open space in a state of void created by the non existence of that reflected ray this is the state of the aspirant remaining in the heart space hridaya akasha in the state of great void maha shunya created through mere self attention by the non existence of the ego the man who has come out of the room into the open spaces dazed and laments alas the sun that guided me so far the reflected sun is now lost at this moment a friend of his standing in the open space comes to him with these words of solace where were you all this time were you not in the dark room where are you now are you not in the open space when you were in the dark room that which guided you out was just one thin ray of light but here in this vast open space are not the rays of light countless and in an unlimited mass what you saw previously was not even the direct sunlight but only a reflected ray but what you are now experiencing is the direct sakshat sunlight when the place where you are now is nothing but the unlimited space of light 
can a darkness come into existence because of the void created by the disappearance of the reflected ray can its disappearance be a loss know that its disappearance itself is the true light it is not direct darkness similarly by the experience of the great void mahasunya created by the annihilation of the ego the aspirant is somewhat taken aback alas even the i consciousness the ego which i was attending to in my sadhana till now as a beacon light is lost then is there really no such thing at all as self atma at that very moment the sadguru who is ever shining as his heart points out to him thus can the destruction of the ego which is only an infinitesimal reflected consciousness be really a loss are you not clearly aware not only of its former existence but also of the present great void created by its disappearance therefore know that you who know even the void as this is a void alone are the true knowledge you are not a void is in an instant as a direct experience of the shining of his own existence consciousness by touching flashing as sapurna in heart as heart the aspirant who started the search whence am i or who am i now attains the non dual self knowledge the true knowledge i am that i am which is devoid of the limitations of a particular place or time know that i self is the true knowledge it is not a void this is verse 12 of ulladu narpadu clinging to the consciousness i and thereby acquiring a greater and greater intensity of concentration upon it is diving deep within instead of thus diving within many thinking that they are engaged in self inquiry sit down for hours together simply repeating mentally or vocally who am i or whence i am i there are others again who when they sit for inquiry face their thoughts and endlessly repeat mentally the following questions taught by sri bhagwan to whom come these thoughts to me who am i or sometimes they even wait for the next thought to come up so that they can fling these questions at it even this is futile did we sit to hold the say court of inquiry calling one thought after another is this the sadhana of diving within therefore we should not remain watching what is the next thought merely to keep on questioning in this manner is not self attention concerning those who thus merely float on the surface of the thought waves keeping their mind on these questions instead of diving within by attending to the existence consciousness with a keen mind thereby controlling mind breath and all the activities of the body and senses shri bhagwan says compare him who asks himself who am i and from which place am i though he himself exists all the while as self to a drunken man who prattles who am i and where am i 
Ekatma Panchikam verse 2 and further he asks how to attain that state wherein I does not rise, the state of egolessness, the great void or Mahasunya, unless instead of floating like this, we seek the place whence I rise, and unless we attain that egolessness, say how to abide in the state of self, where we are that so hum. This is verse number 27 of Ulladu Narpadu. Therefore, all that we are to practice is to be still. Summa irupaddu with the remembrance of the feeling I. It is only when there is a slackness of vigilance during self-attention that thoughts which are an indie of it will rise. In other words, if thoughts rise, it means that our self-attention is lost. It is only as a contrivance to win back self-attention from thought attention that Sri Bhagwan advised us to ask. To whom do these thoughts appear? Since the answer to me is only a dative form of I, it will easily remind us of the nominative form, the feeling I. However, if we question who thinks these thoughts, since the nominative form, the feeling I is obtained as an answer, will not self-attention, which has been lost unnoticed, be regained directly. This regaining of self-attention is actually being self, that is, remaining or abiding as self. Such being alone is the correct sadhana. Sadhana is not doing but being. What our Lord Ramana firmly advises us to take us to as the greatest and most powerful tapas is only this much. Be still, summa iru, and not anything, dhyana, yoga, and so on, as the duty to be performed by the mind. This is from Guru Vachka Koi, verse 773. Some complain when the very rising of the ego from sleep is so surreptitious as to elude our notice, how can we see whence it rises? It seems to be impossible. That is true, because the mind's efforts of attention is absent in sleep, since the mind itself is not at all there. As ordinary people are not acquainted with the knowledge of their being, but only with the knowledge of their doing, that is the knowledge of their making. Efforts for such people it is possible to know from sleep the rising of the ego from there. Since the effort considered by them as necessary is absent in sleep, it is no wonder that they are unable to commence the enquiry from sleep itself. But since the whole of the waking state is a mere sportive play of the ego, and since the effort of the mind here is under the experience of everyone at least in the waking state one can turn and attend to the pseudo I shining in the form I am so and so. Turning inwards daily see thyself with an introverted look and it is the and it the reality will be known. Thus didst Thou tell me, O my Arunachala, 
श्री अरुणाचला अक्षरा मनमलाई वर्ष 44। The enquiry begins only during the leisure hours of the waking state when one sits for practice. Just as a thing comes to our memory when its name is thought of, does not the first person feeling come to everyone's memory as soon as the name pronoun I is thought of. Although this first person feeling is only the ego, the pseudo I consciousness, it does not matter. Having our attention withdrawn from second and third persons and clinging to the first person, that alone is sadhana. As soon as the attention turns towards the first person feeling, not only do other thoughts disappear, but also the first thought, the rising and expanding pseudo I consciousness itself begins contracting. When the mind, the ego, which wanders outside knowing only other objects, second and third persons, begins to attend to its own nature, all other objects will disappear and by experiencing its true nature self, the pseudo I will also die. This is verse number 193 from Guru Vajkai Kowai. If the fecal mind turns towards the first person, the first person, the ego will become non-existent and that which really exists will then shine forth. Attending to the first person is equal to committing suicide. This is from Atma Vichara Patikam, verse 7. This is the great revelation made by Bhagwan Sri Ramana and bestowed by him as a priceless boon upon the world of spiritual aspirants in order to bring Vedanta easily under practical experience. Just as a rubber ball gains greater and greater momentum while bouncing down the staircase, the more the concentration in clinging to the first person consciousness is intensified, the faster is the contraction of the first thought, the ego, till finally it merges in its source. That which now merges thus is only the adjunct upadhi, the feeling so and so which at the moment of waking came and mixed with the pure existence consciousness which was shining in sleep as I am to constitute the form of the ego. I am so and so. I am this or I am that. That is, what has come and mixed now slips away. All that an aspirant can experience in the beginning of his practice is only the slipping away, subsidence of the ego. Since the aspirant tracks down the ego from the waking state where it is in full play, in the beginning it is possible for him to cognize only its removal, but to cognize its rising, how it rises and holds on to I am from sleep will be more difficult for him at this stage. The simile of the rubber ball, let us suppose that a rubber ball is bouncing down from the top of a staircase the steps of which are one foot high after falling onto the second step if it bounces to a height of 
half a foot will it not now fall on to the third step from a height of one and a half feet it will then bounce to a height of three quarters of a foot hence the height from which it falls on to the next step will be one and three quarter feet does it not thus gain greater and greater momentum likewise the shrinking of the first thought i gains greater and greater momentum till finally it merges in its source when the self attention is started from the waking consciousness i am so and so since it is only the adjunct the feeling so and so that slips away because it is merely non existent an unreal thing the unreal dies and the reality alone survives satmeva jayate the aspirant even now when so and so has dropped off he is no loss to the consciousness i am which he had experienced in the waking state now he attains a state which is similar to the sleep he has experienced every day and which is devoid of all and everything because the ego is verily all sarvam since the whole universe which is nothing but thoughts is an expansion of the ego but a great difference is now experienced by him between the sleep that without his knowledge has been coming and overwhelming him all these days due to the complete exhaustion of mind and body and this sleep which is now voluntarily brought on and experienced by him with the full consciousness of the waking state how refer to aladu narpadu verse 26 because there is consciousness this is not sleep and because there is the absence of thoughts it is not the waking state is it is therefore the existence consciousness sat chit the unbroken nature of shiva akhanda shiva swarupam without leaving it abide in it with great love sadhana sharam sadhana sharam is a book in tamil containing the answers given in verse form by the author of this book to clear the doubts of questions whenever the aspirant during the time of sadhana becomes extra watered from this voluntarily brought about sleeps like state he feels absolutely certain i was not sleeping but was all the while fully conscious of myself but though his real aspect existence consciousness is ever knowing without at least doubt its own existence in sleep as i am whenever he becomes extra watered from every day sleep since he the mind did not even once have the experience of continuing to know i am from the waking state he can only say i sleep i slept i did not know myself at that time the truth is this since the state of the self existence devoid of the adjunct so and so is traced out and caught hold of it in the voluntarily brought about sleep with the full consciousness prajna continuing from the waking state the knowledge that the pure existence consciousness satchit knows itself as i am is clear in this sleep state that is why the aspirant now says i did not exist throughout i did not sleep but prior to his sadhana since he was throughout the waking state identifying as i the mind which is the form of the adjunct so and so after waking up from the ordinary daily sleep where the mind did not exist 
this mind the man says i did not exist in sleep that is all those who experience many times this removal of the ego through practice since they have an acquaintance with the experience of their pure existence consciousness as i am even after the removal of the ego can minutely cognize even at the moment of just waking up from sleep how the adjunct so and so comes and mixes those who do not have such strength of practice cannot cognize from sleep itself the ego at its place of rising the only thing that is easy for them is to find the ego's place of setting which is also its place of rising through the effort started from the waking state in either case the end and the achievement will be the same when the attention is focused deeper and deeper within towards the feeling i am and when the ego thereby shrinks more and more into nothingness our power of attention becomes subtler than the subtlest atom and thereby grows sharper and brighter hence the strength of abidance nishtha bala will now be achieved to remain balanced between two states that is in a state after the end of sleep and before waking up in other words before being possessed by the first thought through this strength the skill will now be gained by the aspirant to find out the adjunct so and so which comes and mixes to be a mere second person that is although it has hitherto been appearing as if it were the first person it will now be clearly seen to be his mere shadow non self the primal seat a thing alien to him this is what janaka the royal sage meant when he said i have found out the thief the time of his coming the time and place of the ego's rising who has been ruining me all along i will inflict the right punishment upon him since the ego which was acting till now as if it were the first person is found to be a second person alien to us the right punishment is to destroy it at its very place of rising just as the reflected ray is destroyed at its place of rising by clinging steadfastly to the real first person the real import of the word i existence consciousness through the method of regaining self attention taught by bhagwan sri ramna to whom to me who am i as you practice more and more abiding in this existence consciousness that is remaining in the state between sleep and waking the ordinary sleep which had previously been taking possession of you will melt away and the waking which was full of sense knowledge is vishyas will not creep in again therefore repeatedly and untiringly abide in it this is from sadhana saram by greater and greater more steadfast practice of abiding in this existence consciousness we will experience that this state seems to come open and take possession of us of its own accord whenever we are free from our daily work but since this practice of existence consciousness is in fact nothing but we it is wrong to think that such a state comes and takes possession of us while at work we attend to other things after that work is over and before we attend to some other second or third person we naturally abide in our real state existence consciousness though this happens to one and all every day it is only to those who have the experience of self consciousness 
through the aforesaid practice that the state of self abidance will be clearly discerned after living one second person through thought and before catching another one that is between two thoughts why has it been said in the above two verses of sadhana saram that one or to make effort repeatedly to be in that state our existence consciousness and or to abide in it with more and more love because until all the tendencies vasanas which drive one out of it are completely exhausted this state will seem to come and go hence the need for continued effort and love to abide in self even though this practice our state of existence consciousness is experienced always as inescapable natural then there will be no harm even if waking dream and sleep pass across for those who are well established in the unending self consciousness this pervades and transcends all these three so called states waking dream and sleep there is but one state the whole the all and that alone is real this state which is devoid even of the feeling i am making effort is your natural state of being i conclude this video at this stage next video will continue with inquiry method of inquiry by sadhu om thank you for watching this video namaskar my dear friend thank you